Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and this is the second part of the uh, Geometry Regents, which was administered June 17, 2010. Question 10 says, if you have a triangle PQR, and you know the lengths of the three sides are 8, 12, and 13, they want to know what's the relationship between, uh, between the angles. So if I draw a triangle, and I make the smallest side 8, and medium side 12, and biggest side 13. Um, it's uh, PQ, that's, that's 8, and it's QR, that's 12. So I'm going to put the Q here, so it's part of the 8 and the 12. And that way I get my angles identified correctly. Uh, the rule is, just like in an isosceles triangle, equal sides are across from equal angles. In a uh, in, in a triangle, if the sides are not equal, the angles aren't equal either. Well, not only are they not equal, but the biggest side is across from the biggest angle. So angle P will be the biggest, sorry, 13 is the biggest side, so angle Q is the biggest, across from the 12 is the medium side, and the 8 is going to be the smallest. So because RP is the biggest side, angle Q will be the largest angle. Um, and so, so Q is the biggest angle, uh, P is next, and then RQ is bigger than P, is bigger than R, which is choice one. Again, I advise you to pause to do the question before you look at how, um, how I did it. Okay, here we have a question. Given that Y equals 1 fourth X minus 3, and that y equals x squared minus 8x plus 12. The question says, in which quadrant will the graphs of the given equations intersect? Why don't you click on the screen to pause, and then when you finish, click again. Welcome back. Um, if you graph these, these two things, you could actually use the, the graphing calculator for it, so I'll show you how that works. Just realized there was a slight error there. This is actually a plus 8x squared plus uh, 8x plus 12. Well, here's the uh, here's the graphing calculator. So I pushed uh, the y1 button, the y equals button, typed in the two equations, and then I graph. I'll just say um, zoom six is a good way to make a ten by ten graph. There's the line y equals one fourth x, and here's the other one. Notice how they intersect over here. This is quadrant one, quadrant two. That is called quadrant 3, which is why the answer to this question is choice 3. So we go counterclockwise starting in the top right, 1, 2, 3, 4. Moving on to question number 12. Which diagram shows the construction of an equilateral triangle? Well, this is actually a pretty involved question. If you have a compass and a straight edge, you can create an equilateral triangle like this. You start by just making a line segment, or you're given a line segment. You then would make a circle, which has center, I'll just call this A, center A, and you open up the compass so that the radius of the circle is A, B, and you, and you would make, you can make a whole circle, or a portion of a circle. Then you would lift the compass and put the pointy part of the compass at B and leave it at the same uh, opening so that its radius is AB. You'd make a second circle. Pretty ugly circles here. But the idea is that this third point would make an equilateral triangle. And that's because AB and BC are part of circle B. So they have the same, they're both radius of the same circle. So they're equal. But AB and AC are part of circle A, so they're equal, and that makes all three sides equal. Um, it's funny, you look at these answer choices. This looks most like choice one. You started by, um, you had a line seg, you, you had this big line, and you just cut off an arc, and then lifted the whole compass and put the point here and made another one. You didn't have to make the whole circle, just a portion, and lifted the compass and put it here, did the other. Construction is a pretty amazing part of geometry. To see it turned into a multiple choice question is a little bit unsettling to me. 
but that's how it was. Move on to question number 13. Line segment AB is tangent to circle O at A. Which type of triangle is always formed when points A, B, and O are connected? Don't try to do a question like this without drawing a little sketch. Here is circle O. Here is a point, which I'll call A. And it says it's tangent to the circle at A. That means that if you drew a, a line here, and you could put B over here, tangent line is a line that touches the circle just once, as opposed to a secant line which crosses the circle in two places. If I connect these three points, they want to know what kind of triangle is this? Well, there's a rule that if you have a tangent line to a circle, um, the angle formed by the radius to that tangent point, uh, to the point of tangency, and the line itself always forms a right angle. It's a nice rule from geometry, which is why the answer is choice one. It has to be a right triangle. Um, it says it's always formed. You might look at this and say, well, this is also a scalene triangle. And it might be, but it doesn't have to be, but it does have to be a right triangle. Moving on to question 14. What is an equation for the uh, circle shown in the graph below? Well, if you have a circle that's centered on the origin, the equation is always going to be x squared plus y squared equals whatever the radius squared is. And the radius is 1, 2, 3, 4 which is why the answer to this question is x squared plus y squared equals 16. I think this somehow didn't come out right. The answer is choice number four. Moving on to question number 15. Which transformation can map the letter S onto itself? Now pause the screen, take a second, then push pause when you're done. Welcome back. So, um, which transformation can map the letter S onto itself? If you try these different things, um, a translation for choice two, for instance, would take the S and kind of move it over here. It's still an S, but it's not on top of itself. A glide reflection, similar, similarly, it reflects it and then moves it over, so it's not in the same place. A line reflection, if I take an S and I do a line reflection, it actually becomes a backwards S, so that's not onto itself. But when you rotate an S 180 degrees, it ends up, let's say this point was here, it ends up upside down, but still looking like an S. Answer here is choice four. Moving on to question 16. And I, in isosceles trapezoid A, B, C, D. So an isosceles trapezoid looks something like this. It's a trapezoid, has one pair of parallel sides, but isosceles means these two sides are equal. So it says A, B is congruent to C, D. So they're telling us that those are the two congruent sides. B, C is 20, A, D is 36, and A, B is 17. And they want to know what's the altitude of this trapezoid. I like this question. They, they're asking this. The altitude forms a right angle. Now this is a very important skill to have. We have this right triangle here. And if you know two sides of a right triangle, you can use Pythagorean theorem to get the third side. Well, we know this is 17. We want to know this. So this whole thing is asking us really first find this length right here. Well, the way we're going to get that length is by recognizing that if we draw in this other line segment, that would make this line segment 20 because there'd be a rectangle here. That means these two things together have to add up to 16 so that it becomes 36 altogether, which makes this 8. Now, to solve for this, we use the Pythagorean theorem. 8 squared plus, I'll just call this b squared equals 17 squared. And when you work that out, b turns out, well, I'll do the work. 64 plus b squared equals 329. Subtract 64 from both sides. b squared equals 225. So b squared of 225 is 15. 
15 is the answer to this question, which was choice 3. Question 17. In plane P, lines M and N intersect at point A. If line K is perpendicular to line M and N at point A, then line K is. Well, we'll think of the, of the plane being this entire, your screen. Um, so here's line M, here's line N. They're lines, so they go on forever in both directions. And they intersect at point A. Uh, K is perpendicular to both line M and line N at point A. Uh, the only way that can happen is if, see, if you draw a, perp a line that's perpendicular to M in the same plane, it's not going to be also perpendicular to N unless those two lines are parallel, uh, but they're not. So the only way it can happen is if we go into the third dimension. Let me draw plane P sort of in, in perspective here. Here's plane P. It goes on forever in all directions. Here's line M and line M this way. And I can make a line that's parallel perpendicular to both by drawing it up like this into the third dimension. So it's perpendicular to plane P. That's a pretty hard question. Moving on to question 18. The diagram below shows AB and DE. Which transformation will move AB onto DE such that point D is the image of point A and point E is the image of point B? Uh, pause for a moment or two, try to ponder that question. I'm actually gonna pause also. Okay, so we have a line AB and we want to do some kind of transformation. If you translate uh, 3 to the right and 3, let me make sure that's what... The, yeah, there needs to be a, a minus there. So if you translate 3 right and 3 down, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, A does become D. The problem is that the B, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, does not become E. So that's not the answer. What dilation does is it causes the X and Y coordinates to be cut in half. So A, which is here at 1, 1, at 1, 4, would end up at 1 half 2, which is not on top of point D. Uh, rotate by 90 degrees. That would take this whole thing and rotate it this way, and it would end up somewhere, somewhere over here, which is not the answer. Um, well, that leaves one choice. Reflect Y equals X. When you reflect something over the Y equals X line, the X and Y coordinates get interchanged. So if this is point 0.14, this would, it would get mapped to point 0.41, which is exactly where D is. And B is here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if you go to 6, 4, you get point E, and that's why the answer is choice 4. Moving on to question 19. In the diagram below of central O, chords A, E, and T, C intersect at point B, such as the measure of arc AC is 36 degrees and the measure of DE is 20. And they want to know how big is this angle right here. Well, there's a rule for this. The rule is to find the measure of the angle, if you know these two arcs, you take the average of the two intercepted arcs. So 36 plus 20 is 56, divided by 2 is 28 degrees, which is the answer, choice 3. Question 20, and finding another construction question turned into a multiple choice question. The diagram below shows the construction of the line through point P perpendicular to line M. Which statement is dem demonstrated by this construction? Uh, actually, it's a pretty confusing uh, question. Let's take a look here. Uh, the basic idea is that a circle was drawn with P as the center. So these two points are equidistant from P. And then from this point, an arc is drawn. And with that same radius, this arc is drawn from this point. So these two lines would be congruent also. So these two points are both equidistant from these two points. And that's why the answer to this question, I think, is choice two. Uh, there's nothing in here about a line being parallel. There's no parallel construction. And uh, this is why the answer, this is a very hard question, but I believe the answer is choice two. Choice four doesn't make any sense. Two lines are perpendicular if they form a vertical line. 
So that's going to do it for this part.